everybody. Thought I would do a little video here of just some different kinds of things instead of just one topic. Don't know that I'm gonna give it a name, like an odds and ends or Saturday night special or stuff, uh, things like that. But did wanna talk about a few things and get some feedback from the community other than just comments on uh, just a regular video. So I'm wondering what you guys would like to see more of on my channel or less of. I'm not too proud to take criticism. I think I take it fairly well in most circumstances. If you're making a personal attack about my appearance or my family's appearance or something like that, I'm not gonna take it well. But uh, when it comes to, hey, you could do this better and learn something new by doing it. In that kind of case, I'm happy to take a little bit of criticism. One thing I find really funny is how irritated people got about this. So this is a crescent wrench. This is made for loosening fasteners. That's why it was created. It was created a long time ago, and that is the job it's intended for. So when I used it on my Lyle drill grinder, loosening that very bolt and this very bolt and the nut underneath here, I've uh, got some pretty negative feedback and people criticizing me in hilarious ways. And I thought that was pretty funny, but I just wanna reiterate that this tool was manufactured for the purpose I used it. I am not trying to hammer on something using a micrometer and it kind of felt like that's what I was doing based on some of the feedback. So chill out, it's a totally fine tool to use sometimes. If I need to put a lot of torque on something, I'm not gonna use a crescent wrench. When I'm tightening something up a bit, I'm gonna use a crescent wrench sometimes because that's a fine tool. One thing that I'm gonna try and use is this new thing I just picked up at the hardware store, which I had never seen before. Uh, it's an Armstrong 28-316, is that what that says? Yeah. And this is kind of a, made in USA, uh, this is a sort of ratcheting wrench. And so it splits open like that. But when you're turning on a fastener, in this case ha a half an inch, it will essentially ratchet around. So that one will be my, my new Lyle drill grinder adjustment wrench. So you guys don't have to worry anymore about me destroying the earth by using a crescent wrench. Finally got around to cleaning up my micrometer carriage stop. The paint in the, on the body of it was fine. This thing was rusted almost shut, the actual mic. So it's not in great condition if I ever saw a decent price on a replacement original Monarch, I would probably jump on it. Oops, still not fully loose there. But anyway, this clamp system works really well. It really grabs onto that. It's almost like a, on a bridge port, your quill, your quill stop, uh, just two semicircles pinching on the round part of the quill. Um, interestingly, and I asked about this on Facebook to see what thoughts people had, this guy here has been added on by someone in the history of the Monarch, um, of my particular machine. So they machined this little block of aluminum and drilled and tapped into the body of the stop, and then they've got a quarter 20 hole here and then a quarter 20 hole underneath. So my assumption is that those are there for mounting a dial indicator. I guess. Um, I'm not exactly sure why you would need that or do it that way. But anyway, I thought I'd show it here on a video and see if anybody had any thoughts on why you might do that. I don't know that it has anything to do with that feature or not, but there is some damage to the front flange of the micrometer. Let's see if I can show that. So I don't know how that would have happened or what you would have been doing to have a have those gouges there, but somehow along the way, this got pretty, pretty gnar gnarly right there. But anyway, you can see a little bit of pitting on the anvil or on the spindle rather, and um, it'll still work just fine as a carriage stop. But one thing that was missing was the actual clamp plate that goes underneath. So as we talk some more, we'll go ahead and uh, make a new one.
Big thanks to Stan Z for giving me this cutter. It's a two inch Sandvik. Just comes in so handy. It's just the right size for this machine. Inserts aren't cheap for it, but most inserts aren't. Another thing I've been thinking about is whether it would be good or wanted from you guys if uh, live stream would be fun or not. I typically don't participate in them um, when somebody else is do doing them and mostly because I don't know that they're happening until after they happen. So if you guys think that would be fun or would like to hang out and just do an informal chat thing, you can ask me questions on the fly about uh, this and that, or about me or my shop. Um, I am totally willing to do that if it's wanted, but if no one's gonna watch and it'd be a waste of time, then I'm not gonna set one up. So here's kind of how I envision things working. I've got my round tools in my tray, other stuff sitting around wherever it fits. Kind of weird doing this through the viewfinder of the camera. But anyway, that was the idea. I don't have to push it to a corner that has a, an opening in the slot or any, or a opening in the sides. Just simple as that. I think it's gonna work out pretty well over time. Let's see if it fits. I actually have not checked this. I'm hoping my whole pattern and spacing and everything is good enough. If it isn't, you guys will never see this. Well, that is as solid as the lathe. So the next time I have my bucket of green paint out, I'll go ahead and uh, paint that little bearing block at the bottom. And I use a piece of half inch material just as an eyeball that seems to make sense. And that's uh, pretty much where the bottom of these screws end. So I'll get some new ones and either make or purchase some washers to um, pretty that up a little bit. If it's gonna stay here, I'm gonna look at it all the time. So if we bring the carriage in, it's gonna hit against my little thumb screw I put in, rather than just have it beat on the paint. There was a threaded hole there already, so I don't know if there was something like this threaded into that spot. Could maybe do something a little bit nicer looking, but that's what was there. Should work out just fine. When I got the lathe, it had clearly had a tumble on the tailstock, and the evidence was in the hardware. So the clamp handle here had been welded back together and done so incorrectly. And with the hand wheel, you see lots of big old goobers of uh, weld on there. And they put this on the wrong side. So it's supposed to go on like this. And I was having a hard time finding a replacement until I was talking to Keith Rucker and he happened to have exactly what I needed. So I just got done refurbing that, putting in some uh, bushing in here and a bushing in this uh, revolving handle just because of the uh, size difference between my tailstock and the one that this came off of. So this one's a little bit bigger, but it doesn't bother me a bit. 
So I've now got a replacement handle here and a replacement locking arm here. The original one that came on my lathes was chromed all the way down. This one is uh, just a little bit polished right now. The, the top of the handle is, is chromed. So I don't know yet, I may file on this and make it a little less bumpy and uh, try and really polish, polish it up and then spray some clear lacquer on there or something. Or I may just leave it alone or I may paint it up to the neck like it would have been originally. But uh, anyway, just wanted to show that. So thank you, Mr. Keith. We did a little trading and um, he hooked me up with that fantastic hand wheel to uh, get my Monarch a little bit more original. So along with the hand wheel and the clamp handle from Keith Rucker, this was the main purpose for that uh, little pallet that came all the way across the country. And Keith was trying to unload these. He got a couple in a, in a lot of tooling and didn't need this one. And I said, man, you know what? I wonder if I can't modify that to fit the Monarch. And I think I can. I'm gonna have to do a little bit more thinking and measuring and stuff. Uh, but uh, I think we can turn this into a very usable, large steady rest. So the one that I have that's an original Monarch, I think is six and an eighth or something like that. Uh, I'm sure it's in my older video, but it's, it's around six inches. And this one is around nine and a half inches. So a much larger capacity, uh, obviously an older style in terms of the technology. I think these may just be cast iron uh, bearing guides or whatever you call them. And anyway, you can see maybe the markings there, but that's about 14 and a half inches wide. And the overall height here, 27 inches. So it's, it's a monster. Uh, this is all that, that's with it. So I would have to make another base plate and uh, either just use a bolt or threaded rod, whatever. Obviously it's gonna take a bit to clean it up and get all the grease and grime off of it. But anyway, for the, the basically the, the cost of freight, this thing came, came to me from Keith. So I appreciate that, Mr. Rucker. And we will get down to uh, working on this at some point. It's not a priority at all. I've got the other steady rest and uh, have only used it once or twice. So I, I don't need, need a steady rest very often, but with tooling for a machine like mine, I try to buy now for the eventual need as opposed to get in a bind and try to do something without having the right tooling. So that's my plan anyway. We'll see what happens with this big guy. If uh, it's just gonna take too much modification or I'm gonna have to remove too much material to get it to the right center height on my lathe, um, it is about right as it sits, but of course it needs a V-way for riding on my, uh, my particular configuration. So we'll have to do some changing up. I think it'll be doable. It's just a matter of whether the will is there. But yeah, this is the last thing I wanted to show you guys. So please leave a comment on this video. I'm just wondering what you guys would like to see more of, what you'd like to see less of. Um, you want me to talk less? You want me to show more chip making as opposed to cutting away from the spindle? I try not to show too much. I don't want you guys to get bored just staring at a cutter spinning, you know, what seems like forever. But if you want to see more of that, that's totally doable. I cut and throw away a whole lot of footage of a spindle cutting away metal and, um, I have no problem leaving more in there if you guys want to watch it. So thank you very much. I appreciate you watching the video. Please uh, subscribe if you haven't already. A lot of my view time every video is to non-subscribers. So if you're watching the videos but not subscribed, uh, please do. It does uh, help the channel grow and more people get to recommended my videos if there's more subscribers. So thanks very much. And we will come back with more content very soon. Bye-bye.